Alright, so uh, some of you may know I um, have sold the cruiser. So um, this video is uh, more directed at the new owner actually, but uh, I'll put it up on YouTube for anyone who's interested in um, the systems on the cruiser. So this is um, really just going through operational side of things on um, how I operate the systems inside in the panel. Um, a few walk around checks that I do uh, just uh, yeah just to have a look through it all. So yeah really the videos um, the new owner can't actually come here um, due to COVID can't travel. It's actually going to get dismantled and put in a container and shipped over to him. So what I'm doing is a bit of a video walk around on how I do the pre-flight uh, systems and controls that I use uh, inside uh, just to familiarize himself with um, how to operate the plane on his first flight once he gets it all dis assembled. That's why I'm doing this video. Um, I've sold it to make way for uh, the next one. I've got uh, the seaplane sitting here. Um, still a lot of work to do on it. Um, I've just had to clear out the shed or the garage um, and you'll probably see that in a few videos time. Okay, so free flight um, check on the engine. Very simple setup. Uh, there's really nothing really different to check um, except for, you know, things, simple things like plugs. Uh, always make sure these plugs are installed. Fuel injector plugs. Um, this here, coolant, so you want to check this coolant level, it needs to be halfway or below. Um, it'll always find itself in the middle. You need, an, you need air in the top of this to allow for expansion. Otherwise, if you fill it right to the top, what's going to happen is the minute your engine's up to temperature, it's going to um, go out the cap and uh, it'll dump out the bottom and it will find its own level. So if you actually put too much coolant in, you're just wasting coolant, that's all. So uh, I would advise just leaving it half to quarter. The other thing I check is the belts for tension. This here is just the alternator belt. It's, um, you just wanna make sure that it's uh, good tension and there's no uh, wear on it. The other thing is, and I don't think the camera shows it up very well because of the light, I always check the timing belt as well for any wear. Um, so you can get a good look at that with a torch and uh, just to make sure that there's no um, obvious wear marks on the timing, on the timing belt there. And um, really, that's that's it. You check your oil. There is an oil. There's an oil level that it likes to sit at, which I'll show you. Okay, so here's the uh, dipstick. Here's the dipstick out of the um, engine. There's a couple of marks on it. So what you can see here is you've got you got a low hole and a high or a low and full the notch at the top ignore that notch and what you want to have let's see if i can get a better view of it here there you go so what what the engine will sit at it has a nice um, spot it likes to sit at and it's right in the middle of the two holes so between low and full so as far as services go with this, what I've done is um, every 25 hours I do um, air filter, oil filter, oil change. And um, it's really quite simple to do an oil, oil change here. Got the oil filter right there on a remote oil filter mount there. So you just undo that, dump the oil, um, dump it out of the sump and uh, yeah. Put it all back together and fill her up again. So it's um, it's really quite simple maintenance on this. Uh, fuel taps are always left on. I leave them on all the time. It's no issue leaving them on. Um, 
problem I have with uh, turning them off is if you turn them off, you've got to remember to turn them back on. You've only got about two and a half, three litres, I think it is, three litres in the back surge tank. So what happens is if you turn your fuel taps off, you'll, you'll have enough fuel to start up, do your run-ups and take off before you realise you're going to run out of fuel because your tanks aren't feeding your surge tank. So I always leave them on. Um, I advise um, anyone that's going to fly this just to leave them on because uh, you can forget to check things if you uh, miss it in your checklist. So it doesn't do anything apart from um, in an emergency, you can turn them off so you, so you actually don't feed your surge tank um, and uh, that's all they're for so no, I just leave them on and that way uh, yeah you don't have to worry about them. All right so in behind here um, you've actually got fuse blocks on both sides so there's a fuse block this side behind here and there's a fuse block that side. Now if you reach under you can actually get to it under here. So under through there so what I do is I usually look through this hole and you can see the fuse block there. If you take the top off of it, it's actually labeled which fuse is what on there. So you can see here auxiliary pump, fuel pump, O2 sensor and the STS uh, light, which is the engine fault light. So then you can just reach in there and grab whatever fuse you need. So you can see seats here are on sliders, that here, just pull that and it will slide up and down um, to adjust for your feet. You can see the, uh, the brake set up down there, toe brakes. If you need to check fluid, you gotta undo these little um, caps and you dip it, you actually um, dip it with something so that you can see how much um, you've actually got in there and then you just top it up from there. So this here is the eye level 3AW. There's actually a switch on here. This little switch here, um, it's always off, always, um, because it's actually hardwired through the um, ignition. But what happens if Say, say for example you um, lose a battery or lose alternator, run out of battery, you can actually flick that switch down there, it's battery backup, and that will engage the battery in the unit so you can still have um, all your systems for flight, so your six pack basically. Um, so yeah, and that, uh, that'll run for quite some time. So. It's just a bit of a safety sort of uh, mechanism there in the cabin. Hopefully you can see um, okay with the light. It's just the way the light is, but once I get it all up and running. So ignition on, you'll see some lights flashing, which is normal. Avionics master. This one here will turn on all your avionics. So flick that on and up comes everything. iPad will light up because they're powered by the actual uh, aircraft themselves. So they're constantly charging. So you can see here, this is the iPad mount. They, um, you plug your iPad in through here. So it sort of plugs in and then clips in. I'll show you how to get them out. So to get them out, you just slide it and push on one end. So slide and push on the left and see what happens, it comes out and then you can pull it out. Same to get it back in, it just clicks in like that. So that's, that's it there. This up here, we'll start from the top. So this here is your flap position. Now, um, this is up. So you just push that and you can hear it and it will be flashing. That's automatic's position. So it's actually a sensor to tell you exactly where it is. So it takes it straight up to up. And um, 
then you can use either one. And you just hit them once. Um, and it takes them all to the predetermined positions. Um, so on takeoff, I actually use three all the time just because it's got plenty of power to pull through the drag, but it pops off the runway real quick. So um, usually on that one and that one climb out, once I'm clear of the ground, I just hit up and it will actually take it straight up. I'll actually, I'll push it and I'll show you the flap here. So you should be able to see it go down. And it'll go up again. So yeah, that's the flat position. And um, if for any reason on climb out, it's happened a couple of times. This, um, if you push a button and you don't quite push it um, hard enough, what it'll do is it'll just click through and it's trying to find where it is. Um, if that happens, you can push it again and it will, it'll work. If you're not um, wanting to wait for it to reset itself, um, what you do is down here, I've got a flap override switch here. So basically hit the flap override. And what that does is that turns off this automatic flat position uh, switch all together so there's no this now doesn't work and you can now operate the flaps with this manual up and downs here so say for example this fails um, or doesn't work properly or you're not happy with how it, um, it's performing or anything like that you don't have to rely on it. You basically flip this to flap override and then you can use this up and down. It will go, once it hits its stop, it'll stop and it will automatically uh, stop. So you can hold it and just any position you want, just have a quick look out the uh, window and you'll actually see, see where the position is. The good thing is you can actually leave it mid position, um, go back to on so turn your flap override off which then turns this back on I'll actually show you what happens so if I turn this on you'll see this flap override it'll find itself you'll see how it flashes through and now it's, it's on this one here so we can push any one and it will take it straight back So really simple, but I've got a uh, foolproof sort of override if you need it, and um, I've used it a couple of times. This here, if you're just if you're flying and you sort of bump and your hand doesn't quite hit the button, and um, what happens is it then just clicks through all the light. You see the light going through all the numbers, um, which means nothing's moving. It's just trying to find itself, um, and. Uh, what you can do is quickly turn off and turn back on the override and it will find itself and then it will work. However, if you're not comfortable with waiting for it to come back on climb out, just have it on, have it on uh, override and you can use it manually. Um, so you can put it exactly where you want it. So there, that's that one, bit of a long-winded uh, explanation, but it's it's quite a good switch um, set up, but uh, with everything that's automated, it has its um, downsides as well. And, uh, you know, you just, you can't always rely on automated systems, so that's why the manual override is in place here. So your other switches here are just strobe lights. They're all labelled. Auxiliary fuel pump on or off. And then there, yeah, that's your flap override. So this one here is your trim. So you trim up and down. 
if you move your trim, it'll actually change. It tells you the position of where your trim is. This here is your push the torque button and your throttle, obviously. This is a vernier um, style throttle, so to push it in, you actually need to push the button. So when you're pushing in, just push the button in and then you can push it in and out as much as you like. And then once, once you find a position that you're happy with, that button will click out and then you can fine tune it by turning it in or out. And it will actually stay there. You, can't, you actually physically can't move that unless you push the button. So once you set your setting on your throttle, so turning clockwise will actually advance throttle, anti-clockwise will retard the throttle and you can pull it back out to wherever. So really nice, I like the Vernier setups, they're really good. Here are the lights here, EIS fault, so this is if there's any fault in this engine information system. Now there is a timer set up in here, so at 19 minutes um, or 20 minutes, it's roughly around that time, I've set a timer in here so that this light will start flashing at that time to tell me to do a overall check of everything. What happens a lot of the time is um, we're flying with multiple people and uh, if you're flying along, you can sometimes forget about uh, managing inside your uh, panel. So I set a reminder that every time, 20 minutes from takeoff, I'm flying along, um, I see a flash and it reminds me I've got the timer on here. Okay, do a check of all my engine parameters. Everything's running fine. If I'm happy with that, I hit this button here, that one, which is next. It will actually cancel that alarm. Okay, so hopefully you can see this. Uh, where's the EGTs here? EGTs. So, um, these EGTs here are one, three, four, two. So number one cylinder, three, four, and two, which is basically the firing order as well. So that's that. So um, also the, uh, this is the MGL radio. So I'll um, I'll send you the manual for this as well because there's a fair bit involved. But basically, um, easy enough to adjust. They're a flip flop, so you can the top ones your active station and your bottom ones your standby. You can monitor both by holding the button in and uh, monitor both. But um, by pushing this side button here, it'll actually flip them up and down. So that move the active one. And then you can actually turn turn it to actually adjust the frequency. Just like that. If you push this button, push that, it takes you to the menu that you can actually, like your squelch, this dial will actually change your squelch, or if you turn this one, it takes you to the other one. So set IC volume, comm setup, so you can go set, your vox level, which is your, um, your voice level, your pilot mic gain. If you're getting too much um, static. It's this is like a squelch as well, like your pilot mic gain and your pass passenger mic gain. So you, you can actually um, tune out any noise. So if you've got too much noise in the cockpit, see this one here, the pilot one set at minus three decibels. So I've actually turned my mic gain down a little bit, so it's not as sensitive. And but you can adjust all that. It's just infinite adjustment. Auxiliary input. So you can um, put in music, you can turn it off. This, this is telling you it's off. 
um, but if you just go set you can turn it on um, you can actually plug in an iPhone or anything here this here is a, a cord that plugs into there which actually feeds from this iPad so you can have a movie running on this iPad here and your voice your actual audio is through your radio as well so um, passenger can watch a movie in flight and uh, you can see the other cord is under here it's just hanging there free um, I plug it into the iPad plug this in here and uh, you've got uh, audio through so if we go through it, auxiliary mute off um, so basically when a radio transmission comes through it will turn off the uh, input and you can hear the radio transmission also if you push the torque it won't go through your radio these are all just different settings but I'll give you the manual that you can go through and familiarize yourself with all these um, intercom playback switch this setup here I haven't actually set it up but I've got the playback switch here I've never tried it so uh, but apparently it works from if you look at the manual so you've got to set it up in here which I haven't done I haven't set it up what happens is if you don't hear the transmission from the tower you can hit this button and it will pl play the audio back to you um, so it obviously records audio probably 30 seconds of audio the last 30 seconds or whatever push that button it'll it'll this button here TX playback which is transmission playback it'll actually play back what the tower said to you I haven't tried it like I said but uh, apparently it has that function so that's it for the radio actually probably the best radio I've, I've um, flown with they're really good really easy to use and um, crystal clear like you the, they're built in intercom as well so it's all built into the one unit I'm really happy with it okay so here is uh, the iPad so to get this once you start up usually once I start up then I connect the iPad to the eye level so there's a button here the iPad button push that to open your iPad you need to go to settings on your iPad and you need to go Wi-Fi and you'll see eye level here click on eye level that now is connected the eye level to the iPad so you can now close that by hitting that button there which will close it down and then find the app that you've downloaded which is here Ahars Utility and basically that's it it's connected what you'll see these eye levels the first three minutes when you turn them on they will it will turn artificial horizon will actually turn around and um, find itself um, they're not the most accurate thing in the world I wouldn't fly IFR with this because they're definitely not um, they're not IFR capable and they're purely as a um, reference they're not for actual flying through um, IMC conditions so purely VFR flying I think it's just a nice to have but um, yeah you'll see you'll see when you turn them on it'll find itself and usually it's pretty close um, and then uh, down this side here is all your airspeed, altitude, vertical speed and then you've got RPM, volts and fuel left, fuel right all this information here is being fed through this Grand Rapids EIS so the data in here is exactly the same as what's on your iPad so if your iPad fails you've got backup through your Grand Rapids EIS um, 
but not vice versa, obviously, because it's being fed through here. So this data is being fed through the eye level wirelessly to the iPad. Um, the good thing with this is you can connect up to eight devices, I think it is. So if you're flying along and your iPad goes flat or dies, which it shouldn't because it's already plugged in, but say overheats or something, you can pull up your phone, connect on your phone, and you'll have the data on your phone exactly the same as this. So it's another bit of a safeguard. So what else you got here? You got oil pressure, coolant, oil temperature. All these little boxes here are, are alarms. So obviously it's alarming because there's no RPM. So there's a red box. What happens is the minute there is a RPM, that box will disappear because the alarm's gone away. Stay out until your oil temperature, uh, oil, your coolant temperature and oil temperature all hit the predetermined um, temperature settings that I've set in the system. So, or our coolants, for example, 70 degrees. So you can't take off until coolants at 70. Um, and the minute at 70, that alarm will drop away. The bar will be sitting in the green. You're good to go. So same as um, your exhaust gas temperatures, CHTs. There are no CHTs because it's a uh, water cooled engine. Um, it doesn't have cylinder head temperature because they'd be very similar across all of them purely because uh, it's water cooled. So that's basically it. You've got options down the bottom, which all your settings, um, but uh, the manual for that is also online for your eye level 3AW. I'll send you the manual link. So you've got that. Um, so you'll have to obviously go through all these and learn how to use them um, prior to um, take off. But they're actually really simple. This here, it, it's purely just a nice to have to look at. All the data here is over here and on this airspeed as well. So I can actually fly this plane without the iPads installed at all and just run off this. So, um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's a nice to have. Over this side, you got your hour meter. As you can see, 138.7 hours. That's total engine airframe hours, so very low hours. So you can see here, this one's flashing. It's saying engine fault. That's because it's not running. I've got the ignition on, but it's not running. Um, so this, one, this one's flashing a warning. If you start up and um, you see it flashing, there could be an issue with the engine. It's basically saying there may be a sensor down. But yeah, if you see that flashing, turn the engine off, shut it down, restart. If it's still flashing, then um, investigate sensor issues, plugs with water in them, anything like that. So, um, this one here is a charge fault. So if you see this light come on, um, that's just a, an early warning sign to say your alternator's not charging your battery. This one here, O2 sensor, flashing cold. So the minute you start up, that will be flashing because your O2 sensor is cold. Once your O2 sensor gets to the right temperature, it will stay on green solid, solid green. Basically, that's just telling you that your O2 sensor is functioning and um, good to go. So that's basically those systems there. Now on to the STS fuel injection and ignition. So this here, I've done a video on this one as well, so I'll just quickly go through it, but I'll, I've also got the fuel map written down for you, everything um, so that if anything happens, you can refer back to the original fuel map and um, input that data. Now this here is your lean rich gauge dial here you must, on pre-flight, before start-up, you must check where this is because it has to be sitting in the middle, lined up with that line. That there is the mixture of the engine and um, it's tuned to be in the middle. If you turn it this way anti-clockwise, it actually leans the engine right out. and. Um, vice versa you go the other way it will enrich in it 
So on startup, it has to be in the middle and pretty much the whole flight, it has to be in the middle. Now, with this here, this fuel injection system, when you start it up, you'll see this SDS EFI EM5. So it's basically just the, it's an EM-5, it's the model of the actual fuel injection. To get to the pages you want, you have to push gauge. So on startup, you start the engine, everything. If this is still showing here, push this gauge button. What that does is that takes you to all the pages that you need. And these arrow buttons will scroll through the pages. So you can see here, manifold pressure, RPM, ignition, O2. So what you can actually see is while this is running, so 19.7, that's just a default. Um, once the engine starts up, you probably should see around that 10.5 to 12 to 12.5. And in flight, it's all set up and it's all programmed. You don't have to adjust a thing. Um, it will adjust itself. And uh, But if you want to lean the engine off, you can turn this dial either way, like Rich and I lean, and this O2 reading here will change. And that way you can lean it to 12.5, which is the optimum um, fuel-air ratio. I'll try and run this a little richer. Um, just to keep the valves cool. So um, if you lean them out too much, you can get hot valves, exhaust valves on your engine and um, end up burning your valves out and then you'll lose compression. So I always run around that 10.5 um, to 12.5 and that's, that's it, no more than 12.5. If you go to 14, that's running too lean for the horsepower that we're putting out in this engine and the constant running. You, what you'll see is your exhaust gas temperatures will go through the roof and um, you have the potential to burn your exhaust valves. So 10.5 to 12.5 on your O2. And you can adjust it here with this. So. My advice is leave it in the middle and don't touch it um, unless you know what you're really doing and watching because you can lean this out and end up leaning the engine way too much and hurting the engine. So that's my advice. Everything in here is pre-programmed. It should run perfectly. I don't have to touch a thing. Um, I literally turn the key, start it, runs and you don't have to worry about it. This here is a nice to check. If you start seeing 14, you can actually turn the dial to rich in it. So that's that page you can go through. Uh, magnet seen, not seen, that's for setting up. You don't need to know that. Um, LCD brightness, LCD contrast. These are all just um, settings, lean with ignition switch enabled. These are all just settings for tuning and programming. Crank ignition retard, so 15 degrees. Okay, so all these settings we're just going through, um, they're all in the manual. Values lock is on. So I've actually locked it so that these values can't be changed. So if you need to unlock it, you actually push the, this one here up or down. So you can turn it off, which is off there, or push it to lock it. So the, that lock is on, so you can't accidentally push any settings now. Close loop off. All these settings here, you really don't need to know unless you need to program it, which you can do by putting in all the written down um, data that I've done for you. So basically, the whole fuel and ignition map for this engine is been, has been written down so that if you need to, you can go back and check these settings and change them. These are the pages. I don't know if you can see that. These are the pages you can scroll through, which is, um, we've been through this one. So gauge two has the knob, uh, which is uh, the actual percentage. 
So you can see if I turn the um, the lean it off or enrich in it, you'll see the percentage change. So it sits on 10%. Um, duty is zero. Ignition is 18 degrees. That will change as the RPM goes up. I've actually programmed it into um, change ignition timing um, with RPM as well. Okay, so battery you can see 12.3 volts. It's um, a little down because the alternator is not running and also I'm, I've been sitting here for a while. Throttle, uh, throttle position, so that's your, if I move the throttle, it will actually change that, which is, um, you can see there, so 10 is pretty much closed, O2 again, and your barometer here. So yeah, manifold pressure, ignition, RPM. Uh, so we go through these, we'll get to fuel trim, lean, lean warning disabled. So there's no lean warning on there in the settings. Okay, fast idle, there is none. No air conditioning in this, so uh, the, basically that there um, is for if you want an air conditioner you can program in when you turn the aircon on the idle goes up slightly. Okay this setting here is for your O2 sensor type so it's a wideband O2 sensor. Idle fuel now. I won't go through these really in detail. Um, all of this is in the manual as well. It's all pretty self-explanatory once you've gone through it a few times it looks a lot, but it's not really. There's um, once you break it down into different systems, like your engine information system, which is the same here. Um, all you've got is airspeed here, airspeed there, and um, you know engine data here, engine data there. Uh, so you can actually see all your temperatures, engine temperature, and everything on here as well. So say that's that's not working that's not working in flight you've still got it all here as well so there's a fair bit of um, redundancy built in um, which is what I like uh, about it during the whole build construction I was trying to think ahead of you know what would you want as redundancy in flight and um, yeah so that's it pretty much all right so that's a bit of a walk around hopefully that uh, clears up a fair bit of uh, the questions and um, for the other guys watching, hopefully it wasn't too boring. Um, it's more directed at uh, definitely the new owner and how to use the, uh, the systems in there. But, um, but yeah, hopefully you liked it. We'll catch you on the next one.